Welcome to Catapult Your Business, where we help catapult your business one question at a time. We're here to serve entrepreneurs and help them grow and get to levels they never thought were possible. I've got an awesome question today brought by Mr. Greg Maddox. He's a four-year veteran with us, an amazing senior business advisor. He loves talking about all things exit when it comes to business owners hitting their freedom. And the big question he brought today for us to, you know, get into and talk deeper about is why do I need, why do I need to run my business with an exit in mind? And that's what we're going to dig into. Now, before we get into that topic, I want to share a little bit of information here about Greg. So Greg, do you mind if I uh, bring you on here first just to share what's your background? Why, why is exit so important to you? Yeah. So uh, every cultivate advisor uh, has owned their own business for at least 10 years. So the 14 years prior to me joining Cultivate, I owned a financial service company where we did advanced planning, which is asset protection, tax reduction, uh, wealth transfer, wealth growth through the business and eventual exit legacy. And we partner with tax legal pros and uh, investment management pros to have a more holistic game plan uh, for their business owner clients. And you know what I found was that the business is the goose that's laying the golden eggs. And for most yeah. business owners, it's like uh, there's no real separation between like business life, personal life, finances separate from the business. And so it's easy to get lost in the weeds of just grinding things out every day. And um, and then most people end up having, a, you know, life throws them a curveball and all of a sudden they're not in the position they thought they'd be. So I came to, you know, really understand that beginning with the end in mind or just having an eye towards like, what am I building this business with intention for and uh, and creating a roadmap around that people use the term exit. And sometimes that's considered a four letter word. Some people think it's only about a transaction at some point in the future. I actually right. you know sell my business. That's what exit is about. And it's not, it's just about building the business. It's not necessarily about getting you and your money out of the business at some point in the future. It's building a business that gives you what you want starting right now. And for most of us, if I used one word, it's freedom. They want to create, you know, they want to innovate. They want to do things that they find are valuable. They want to have time. They want to have money. They want to have a good yeah. impact on their, their clients, et cetera. So that's how do we create freedom? And so you have options. And that's why I think it's a really important topic. Well, you, you obviously have been hard at work for the last four years here at Cultivate, helping a lot of businesses move through this mindset of how do I think about this exit in mind? How do I make intentional decisions in my business to make the business worth more? So kudos to all the success you've had. I know you've got an amazing rap sheet behind you with the clients that you're working with. I think we may even talk about one or two of them today as we get into mm -hmm. the details. But sure. you know, I think, I think a lot of people think about exit and you hit it right on the head. They think about this transaction. I, I know when we first started the, the, you know, founded the company and we were working with businesses, we were just shocked, you know, when you're going like, why are you doing this? And it'd be like, Oh, I want to have freedom or I want to have autonomy or, you know, and I go, yeah, yeah. And do you want to run it forever? Oh no, no, no. Well, do you know what the company's worth? No idea. Do, do, you, mm -hmm. do you know what levers are going to be looked at or, you know, what, what metrics will be viewed to know if it's worth X or Y in the market? Or do you know who's going to potentially buy you or, who would potentially buy you and why they would even want to buy you? And the answer consistently, and you, I know you know this more than anyone, Greg, often is I have no idea. I've never thought oh, about yeah. it. I've never processed through it. And then they get themselves in this position, right? So obviously we lead all of the hundreds of clients we work with, not just on how to grow and scale the company. It's also about, hey, what is actually the exit strategy here? Because that's what we'll build the company in pursuit of. So, I mean, you've seen this, right? You've seen that mentality? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, because when you first start a business, as you know, we use our phases, right? The hustler phase. It's all about sales. You got to chase the dollar. You're adding a dollar of revenue. You're trying to add in a dollar of profit. And we get locked in there, I think, in that mindset <clears throat> as entrepreneurs when the you know we're so busy chasing income that we're not thinking about building an asset of value. We think that it just naturally will come. You could have a business that pays you a lot of money that's not valuable to anybody else. So as long as you're working, as long as you stay on the treadmill, you get paid a lot of money. If you ever stop working, if you ever left the business for 30, 60, 90 days, the whole the wheels fall off. That's not an asset that's valuable to anybody else, no matter how much money you earn while you're working. And so it's just flipping the perspective a little bit to say, you know what, if I focus on value, building value, just pulling myself out of the weeds of the 
the hub of all activity in my business. I'd be in control of it. I have my finger on the pulse, but don't have to have everything you know, flow through me directly. That uh, That's a more valuable business. Put people, process systems in place. By the way, it's more fun to run. By the way, you'll have more time and it's money and you'll have more <laughs> yeah. choices of what you want to do. Yeah. And that's something that you could then choose to scale up bigger if you want uh, or not. Right. Well, and I think I think that's it, right? People don't always know what level they need to get the business to. They have nothing to measure success against. So it just you get on this rat race where you're just continually driving. And I kind of like where you're headed there. You know, so many entrepreneurs have just bought themselves a job is all they've done, right? They haven't actually created a valuable asset that grows without them um, and, and continues to drive. And I think the biggest question most owners need to ask themselves is if you died, right? If you got hit by a bus tomorrow, right? Would this business be super successful and still get to the same level without any notice you were taken out of the business? Because I mean, Greg, how often do people really exit their business and go, oh, I'm going to sell my business this year. I'm going to sell it in the next quarter. My experience is the opposite. Yeah. Are you seeing the same in the market? Yes, yeah, there's actually statistics on this. Um, 50% of business owners will not exit their business on their terms or timeline. Why is that? Uh, life. You know, uh, in the <laughs> yep. you know, financial planning world, they call it the five D's, death, disability, disruption, uh, divorce. Um, I forget the fifth one. But if you think about <laughs> that, there's life can throw you a curveball. Disruption yeah. or disagreement with partners is the, the other one or that, other that stakeholders. Yeah, disruption. Yeah. Disruption. Think about COVID or think about technology. You know, Uber comes in and kills your taxi cab company. Right. How many people right. are buying taxi cab businesses these days? So there could right. be a shift in the market, a shift in technology, a shift in just your industry that you weren't prepared for that kind of forces your hand. And so the idea is, we well, well let's just begin with the end in mind and and, you know, prepare for those contingencies. Well, and Greg, we saw that in 2022. I mean, the amount of transactions, I, I know that we're not talking about exit as a transaction right now, but the amount of transactions that took place in the post-COVID era for you know 2022 was massive. I mean, it was a massive amount. Of, I mean, anybody that was in the MA, I mean, they were gunning, right? Brokerages, they were moving. And that was because some tax legislation was getting put put to place. You had you had a lot of industries like the tech, you know, kind of looking like it was going to bubble out. So people wanted to make sure they got to capture some liquidity at that time. So for anybody to come in and just go, I don't have to worry about my exit right now because I'll worry about that when I'm ready. That is just a completely wrong approach to running your business. And there's just a different way. There's a different way to run the business to what you were sharing makes it easier, makes it more sustainable, increases value. And it's it's more fun to just not chase revenue and just chase profitability. It's a lot more fun to go, let's build enterprise value within the organization and do it in a way with intentionality that will attach to the right way to exit. Because, I mean, Greg, I think a lot of people don't realize how many different types of exits there might be, right? I mean, you might have a strategic sale. You might do an asset sale. You might do a partnership roll up. I mean, it, it can go in so or many you can different just ways. really simplify it. We have yeah. lots of our clients are not looking to sell or have a transaction. They want to exit right. operationally. They just, they love what they do. They don't see themselves uh, stopping doing it time soon. They just don't want to do it eight, 10 hours a day anymore. They want to right. build the business to a point where the team can handle the vast majority of it, or at least the stuff that, that it doesn't excite them as much. And they only stay involved in the stuff that they're really passionate about. You know, we have a client who starting this year became an empty nester. And for the past couple of years, he's been preparing that he and his wife, once the last kid was out of the house, they're buying a bus and they're going to take a one year sabbatical. Now he's going to work from the road um, 15, 20 hours a week. Now that's new for him, only 15 or 20 hours instead of full time. Right. And, and being remote right. and being remote is also new to him. He's used to being in the office, right. but you know, with intention. So to him, this is a version of, of an exit, right? He's not leaving the right. business. He's just taking he's built the business to a level that gives him some choices. It can produce time and money for him to go and do some other things, in this case, travel with his wife and have some time to recharge um, while he still stays involved, but just in the key things. And so I think that that's where a lot of people get um, they think exit is this thing that happens to unicorns that they hear about on C-SPAN yeah. or CNBC or something. And um, you know, the truth is we're all going to leave our business at some point. 
So how do we want to build it? Do you want to leave with a golden egg or do you not? <laughs> yeah, well, I think there's three main problems that you know all business owners face, regardless of how many commas they have in their revenue or personal income, is that they tend to own a job, not a business. They tend to have yep. all their financial eggs tied up in the business basket. And, um, and in the pursuit of solving those two things, they tend to over-sacrifice on the personal family and health front, thinking that, you know, yeah. hashtag grind, I can white knuckle this out. Now, as I mentioned, we've all our Yeah, and we all, we're going to have to work hard and lean in. But, you know, yeah. being an entrepreneur is hard work and it doesn't get easier as the business grows. The truth is you have to get stronger as an entrepreneur, as a CEO, as a builder and leader of people, process and systems. Otherwise, right. you know, you can burn the candle at both ends for a period of time, but eventually you might burn the whole thing down. So you have to awesome. put the oxygen mask on yourself, too. Are you getting the advice you need for your business from this episode? Do you want to get more than just one question answered and have it customized to you and your business? Well, Cultivate Advisors works one-on-one -on -one with thousands of business owners every day. Let them help you scale your business today. Don't just listen to this episode. Take action and go to CultivateAdvisors.com to see which advisor you get matched with and receive a free two-hour business assessment on how you could scale your business to the next level. Act now at cultivatedvisors.com. Yeah, well, I love that. And Greg, so I think I think hopefully people listening in, right, to want to solve this question, I think hopefully we've helped them capture that, look, this is not just about the transaction. It's about you don't know when it's going to happen. You should be building it for this reason. And again, exit can also, like you said, just mean you're going to step back. You're going to have a business that runs and truly is a growing asset without you having to be involved day to day and having to have a job within. So I think that's the right strategy. Let's Let's turn our attention, though, Greg, because, you know, we've done this a lot every day. People listening in maybe don't get to have these conversations as often. Where do we get started, right? When we think about putting the end in mind, what, what's a good place to start? Where do you usually work with your clients first? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's interesting. If you ask a business owner, like, how much do you need to sell your business for? I don't know, as much as possible. It's like it's it's the wrong way to start. So, um so I built a little, uh, you know, calculator tool, a little piece of software that helps answer this. But basically, I start with, well, just tell me the lifestyle that you that you're currently pulling out of your business. So that's however you pay yourself, salary, bonus, distribution, perks, all in. Sure. And if that's not an exciting number, give me the number that you really want. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then we say, OK, well, what would it take to you know, produce and support that lifestyle without the company? So that means you have to have other income sources. And so we take into account, do you have any other income sources like passive? And you might have like a lot of our clients like real estate. So they might have some real estate income, et cetera. And then yep. just working with a wealth manager, you're going to have a pile of savings over time. And so you can back into, well, how big of a pile of money would I need to pull off the income that I desire? And most people, most business owners are wholly illiquid that the vast majority of their wealth is tied up inside of the business value and not in right. liquid savings or other income sources. So um, we, bis we know that most business owners are not going to save their way to this. Their business is going to do the heavy lifting. So we basically back right. into um, if I were to, to sell my company, how much would I have to sell it for? net of debt, net of taxes, fees, you know, brokerage, you know, costs, et cetera, um, and my percentage ownership so that I could walk with enough money to bridge that wealth gap to give me the income stream that I want. And just using, and it's not tax legal or wealth management advice, it's just simple back of the napkin planning. And I'll, I'll share one right. other thing that most clients, whatever that number is, they look at that number, the value, you'll hit your, I call it your freedom point, the value at which the business could be sold if you chose to and you walk with enough money. Or if we do it right, we build it the right way. You could make work optional because the business could kick off that cash flow for you without you working 40 hours a week right. or 30 or 20 hours a week in it. Most business owners see that number and they they laugh. There's no way my yeah. I'm ever going to build a business <laughs> worth I'm that amount of money. So yeah, <laughs> I had a client where it was four million dollars, and they thought that was unobtainable. Another client was twenty-three million; they thought that was unobtainable. Another client, fifty million; they thought that was unobtainable. And that's because most business owners don't understand what I call business owner math, and that most business owners are so focused on on chasing dollars, adding a dollar of revenue, adding a dollar of profit, they don't understand that business owner math is about multiplication. 
It's about right. the multiples, building value inside your business, the way businesses are, are valued. It's revenue or oftentimes profit times a multiple. And it's usually a range. If you have a better business that takes less of your time and, and involvement, you get a higher multiple. It's worth more. If you're really right. involved, it might not be worth anything or people will barely pay you anything for it, a lower multiple. So most business owners right. are so focused on driving revenue that they don't even pay attention to the real mover is how do I increase the multiple? And that's what we do at Cultivate. All the, all the business advisory work that we do, people, process, systems, leveling up the team, um, elevating the owner into a CEO or chairman, uh, chairperson position, oh, yeah. uh, is all the stuff that makes the multiple higher, which makes it more valuable. And guess what? It pays you more money you know, while you own it. It gives you more time while you own it. And so yeah, we can call it time because we build at Cultivate revenue and profit while we increase multiples. So when you do that, you can collapse time and and move a business from worth a few million dollars to twenty three million dollars in a five year span because we are focused right. on the right things. So we're increasing yeah, revenue and, profit, and the multiple is going up at the same time. So I have a higher number of profit times a higher multiple and you get this hockey stick of a value yep. acceleration, which allows you to hit that number in shorter time frames. And my little calculator tool just allows a business owner to visualize this very simply in a way yes. that's meant for a, an entrepreneur, not for a financial you know, person or an M&A person, so that they could create a roadmap that says, oh my God, I can hit that number in, in five years at a growth rate that I'm confident because I've been hitting, you know, whatever it was, 15, 20%, whatever their number is that they say, I can grow at that level every year. But if we focus right. on the right stuff, that growth is now equating to value growth, not just revenue growth. And that's where they're like, right. holy cow, I could actually do this. That doesn't mean they want to sell. I got lots of clients who we have a, a time frame is usually just because we have to set a target. Sometimes they have something, a health scare, uh, they're aging out, et cetera. But usually it's just like, well, how long do you want to take to get it to the point where you can make work optional? You want to do it in 10 years? In five years, I think I think what you're speaking to is really real. And so, you know, people listening in right now, I want you to really take this away. The place to start is you've got to figure out what that number is and where does that freedom hit? Because it's it's the only way to really ground in to to have something to work back from. And then, if you listen to what Greg was saying, and a lot of what we do is like, well, what's the multiple on this type of business, and what are the ranges we can get? Because uh, you know, you could have a business in the same industry go for a two x multiple of revenue or EBITDA or a 12X of EBITDA, right? And that's a completely different multiple. And so what I love you're talking about, Greg, is that again, most people are like, if I get bigger, it'll be worth more. Not always true. <laughs> it's actually more the case of the more systems you have, the more processes you have, essentially the less you need to be involved, mm -hmm. the more this business is going to be worth. Because people buying businesses generally, that's what they're looking for. They want to know how easy is it going to be to take this over if, if it's a more traditional route exit. So I love that you're slowing down. That's yeah. a really great, great place to start. If somebody who's already kind of figured out what that looks like, and we've talked about systems and processes, what else goes in to increasing that multiple? And we're not going to get in the weeds. It's obviously different for everybody. I know everything we do, Greg, is very tailored to the business at that exact moment. But what are some other just common things you've seen when you work with your clients on helping them, you know, think with exit in mind as they build and grow and scale the company? Uh, well, it's really people, process, and systems, you know, and okay. I would say uh, documenting Talk about the so people. getting it out of there. Talk know, about the people so first. People. Talk about the people. Yeah, so uh, let me give a, a statement across all three, though. It's about getting it out of your head and onto something that is transferable. Yeah. And it's not about you physically teaching or showing or telling somebody how to do it every time. So for people, it's a matter of how do you... Uh, have the right roles? How do you tie KPIs and metrics to what they're doing? Uh, how do you have yep. a, how do you lead the team? Like what is the rhythm of the way that you guys get together and, and hold people accountable? Um, what's the culture? Do, do Does your team, do they think and act like business owners or do they punch a clock and can't wait to leave at the end of the day? Which is compensation, right? Compensation tie-ins, yeah. like how does that work? The KPIs, yeah. it's the quality, it's the quality of the people and how easy? How much? How easy is it to replace the people? How do you, you train them? Issue? Onboard them? Yeah. 
How do you get the secret sauce out of your top performers' heads so that if they go on vacation or they got sick or they got lured away to work for somebody else, all of that knowledge doesn't leave with them? And so that leads to the systems. The, The hard part, Greg, that I constantly see is that when we meet with our clients, sometimes you'll hear some low introspective owners, right, kind of in the room going, well, in my industry, it doesn't work that way. And it's like, okay, that, that's not true. <laughs> like the reality yeah. is, is that you just have to, you have to probably increase your skills. So I love when you're talking about, you got to put the gas mask on yourself sometimes and, you know, take a big breath to, to inhale some of the skill development, which I know we do every day, right? We get, we have the privilege to work on those things. So let's talk about process and systems. Give me just one or two things for the listeners kind of coming in today to go like, what, what do you have to think about as it pertains? Because I think a lot of people hear process and systems, but I don't know if they, I think they just think like, oh, I'll just write a simple word, word, word doc. And they don't fully understand what does a system mean? Yeah, if you think, uh, here's a, just a simple example. When's the last time that you hired somebody? What was that experience bringing them on the job? Yeah. For most small business owners, you know what it is? Um, oh, crap, we have a capacity problem. Let's hire somebody on fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's get them to start on Monday. Uh, you, you know, sit next to Bob, shadow Bob, you know, because yeah, I'm busy as the owner. I'm still working in the business. Uh, when you're done, shadow Bob, I want you to sit next to Susie. Watch what Susie does. Uh, okay, then meet me in the conference room, you know, at, at 2 o'clock. I don't get there till 3.30 because I've been busy putting out fires, and that person is twiddling their thumbs. And then we just say, just jump in and just start doing it, you know, just start doing it. And then I get mad as the owner because um, – they don't know how to do it the way that I do it. And when they get stuck, I'm like, why don't you just know how to do that? Or they come to me with a question. I just answer it. I just quick, solve your problem, solve your problem. So the opposite of that is let's think about how do we bring a a new employee on? What are the steps? Do we tell them a little bit about our history and our mission and how we got started and why we do what we do? Do we give them an overview of here's the different tech and tools that we use as a company? You might not have used this suite. So let me give you just like the beginner's guide of how to interact with the different tools that we use technology wise and then getting into the specific role. How do we actually now you know, onboard you into that role. Here are the expectations. Here's the leadership team. Here's where the knowledge is. Here's the training. Here's how you do it. Here's the tech that we use or how we use the tech in this role. And having that documented. So document just means uh, record a video like this while you're showing somebody how to do it. Uh, Screen grab. If you're showing people how to do it, click there. Thanks for tuning in to Catapult Your Business, where Cultivate Advisors is helping you catapult your business one question at a time. Are you running your business or is your business running you? At Cultivate Advisors, they'll match you with an expert advisor and do a free two-hour deep dive for your business. This will give you the clarity you need on how to get your business to the next level. Cultivate has worked with thousands of businesses. What do you have to lose? So head over to CultivateAdvisors.com and sign up for your free two-hour session. But the thing, Greg, that I often see too, though, is that people, you know, owners that come in and they think about process and systems, they don't understand that what you just described on that's one system. There's probably 80 to 100 for each yeah. business, right? And that's that's what they understand is how vast this is and how much of a lift it is, which is, and for you to do it yourself is almost impossible because you're always going to think, you know, I, I mean, look, we, I, I, I found and Cultivate where we help businesses do this every day and I still have to have people help me do it even though I do it for a living because you're so close to it. Right. (laughs) And I think, I think where people get off on process and systems, a new word that I would love to introduce that I talk a lot with the people I advise with is I say, look, use the word guardrails. It's about creating guardrails. Mm -hmm. Think about you're building a fast highway. You're creating a four lane highway and you want to put, you're going to install guardrails along the thing. So that way, as you continue to grow and these cars start ramping up in your business they don't come flying off the highway and they get stuck within. You might have a couple crashes here or there, but you keep everybody in the highway. And I think that's a really easy well, analogy to understand what is process and systems truly. And, and I love that analogy because it also, one of the things that we tend to do as entrepreneurs, as con- control freaks, is you yeah. know try to micromanage our, our team to do it exactly how we did it. Um, Right. And the truth is, if you're going to grow, you're going to eventually have to attract people that are better than you and that have different uh, skill sets and, and let them tap into their own creativity. And you can do that if you give them the guardrails. I actually saw I was in the Army um, 
you know, before I went to college and I saw General Norman Schwarzkopf, you, for people who are old to remember him from Desert Storm, I heard him speak and he talked about how he liked training his new lieutenants. So I like to create mm-hmm. what you call guardrails. He called it something else, but I like to give them the parameters with which they can operate within. And then I Here's let them go and operate. Yeah. Then I, then I let them go and operate. Yeah. The truth is if you put the guardrails up in your business, um, no employee is going to be able to tank your company. You know, you, if they do something wrong, it's going to identify where some training is needed. <laughs> and you could or, create... or if you have tech enablement, right? Tech enablement that doesn't even allow people to make the air. A lot of times businesses will yeah. create that on what I call their core product, right? Like that, that core service or core product usually will stop at a quality control. But I, I think what you're talking about, Greg, is really important. And I think, I think for people listening in, if you've ever found yourself saying, oh, I wish I could just duplicate myself. That's actually not the problem. You probably actually don't have enough guardrails, processes, and systems in place that's actually allowing you to duplicate yourself. And, and I think people just, they miss out on that, that piece. Um, Greg, yeah, we're, we're running out of time here. Oh, go ahead. I say uh, one other thing that I hear uh, business owners get confused about, what's the difference between a system and a process? Well, a process is just the path, how something is yes. done. A system is, can I put tech, apply tech to that path so that human error, yeah, yeah. so human error is taken out that they can't mess up my, my process. So checks and balances, systems are checks and balances processes is what do I do? Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, I, I, I think we've, I think we've painted a clear picture for everybody listening in Greg right. of why should I run the business with an exit in mind? It could mean millions for you <laughs> in exit dollars eventually It could mean that you're prepared for when the exit happens. But more importantly, what I love about the first part we had of this podcast here is we talked about just how much easier the business can run. And I know, you know, when when we first started working with some of our founding clients and before we kind of built Cultivate to what it was, to what it is now, like what we found is that people would come in and go, yeah, I want to go exit for that. I want to build to that. And then you get three or four years in and they go, actually, I don't want to get rid of this business. Uh, this is yeah, a this lot is of pretty fun. good. I'm kind of yeah, liking this. Losing yeah. work life balance, you know my I, I you know I've got a great family life. I haven't sacrificed. I'm doing more personal hobbies than I've ever done before. I'm at a level of income I never thought was possible. You know, and we yeah. we're, we get to hear all these stories. And I think a lot of business owners that are out there, like you said, just grinding out still, just they don't realize there's just a different way to run the business. And so I'm so glad you came on to share some of that insight. Um, we're, we're wrapping up. So Greg, anything else do you think should be shared with those listening in to go, why should I care? Or why should I put an exit front of mind as I run my business? What's the last piece of advice you'd like to leave them with? I say it, it will make your life better. If you just begin with the end in mind, it'll allow you to really connect to why you're building this business and create a path that will get you there much faster than just creating a random, uh, I want to do this target next year. You know, I did a million this year, so I want to do 1.2 next year. If we actually connect to your what you're actually going, the freedom that you want, the freedom point, we could reverse engineer a plan that is way more meaningful to you and way more impactful for you and your family, your community, that is more valuable to you just in life, not just dollars. So that's why you should do it. And you'll be prepared. You'll be prepared for life throwing you curveballs as, as it does. Love it. Well, Greg, first off, Thank you for just being an amazing resource around this topic. I know all of our clients at Cultivate that get the chance to work with you, love their engagements. You're doing a killer job at Cultivate and you're, mad, you're you. adding just a massive amount of impact. And so first, I don't always get a chance to share those things. So I want to share that with you, Greg. And for those listening in to go, gosh, I should start with the end in mind. I need somebody to help us do that. That's what we're here for. That's what Cultivate can help you do. If it's Greg or somebody else on our team, you know, reach out, go to cultivateadvisors.com and learn a little bit more about us. If you want to talk to Greg specifically, you know, on the website, just let us know you want to connect with Greg. We'll get you in touch with him. Uh, But we're here to help serve you and help you grow and scale your organization. In short, catapult your business to the next level. So thanks for joining us for our question of how do I run the business and why should I run the business with exit in mind? Greg, thanks again. So glad to have you and we'll see everybody next time.